Maybe well, you want to tell everyone okay. just a, a brief summary of uh, of your your company and kind of your background, and then we can get started just quickly because I think probably we missed the first part. <laughs> For sure, yeah. So I run a company called Coach Wazo Career Coaching. My my name is Mike Bird and. Wazo is the French word for bird. So that's kind of where my brand comes from. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I specialize in helping students and new grads transition from school to the working world. Although occasionally I do work with people who are a little further down uh, the road in their careers. And I basically have come from a teaching, coaching, and uh, including athletic coaching background into the world of career development for people who are starting out. Um, that's kind of the group of people I've always worked with. And I myself struggled in that transition. So I see a lot of myself and the clients that I work with. So that's how I've arrived at this work that I do today. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for your time. I'll be back towards the end uh, and then we can kind of take questions and do some concluding remarks. So I'll leave you to it. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks so much, Rachel. Okay. So for everyone who was super patiently waiting for me to um, make some sound that was audible, uh, you've heard about me. I'm also the co-host of a, of a podcast called the Career Builders Podcast that you can listen to on Wednesdays. Uh, you can check that out on any pl podcast platform, the Career Builders Podcast. Let's jump into this. Um, I'm not going to talk for hopefully all the time. My, my goal is to try and take as many questions as possible. And I encourage you guys to engage, network, and, and have all kinds of fun in the chat section. That's one of my favorite parts of these kinds of presentations. I'm talking about the four phases of career transition, and these are four kind of um, fairly distinct places where I see job seekers go. Uh, they come to me from. Uh, they go. They go through this cycle, whether they are coming out of school and going into the working world, or maybe they are going from one job to another, or they are unemployed and they want to become employed. These are four phases that I see pretty much across the board, and I want to teach you guys about what these phases are so that you can know where you are in a transition yourself and then therefore know what actions you should be taking as you go through the cycle. So really quickly what those phases are, phase one is what I call orientation, where we're trying to figure out what's our next move, who am I in this world, what are my strengths, what can I really do, what can I bring to the table. Phase two is called uh, what I call the positioning and branding phase. This is where people uh, know where they'd like to go and they may be struggling to communicate that to the world. Um, they, they may have a LinkedIn profile that doesn't fully explain what they do. They might have a resume that says 14 different things when really an employer just wants to know one or two things. Um, that's a very normal and understandable challenge that people face in, in phase two. And we'll talk more about that. Phase three, what I call the job search execution phase is really kind of like getting into the trenches, getting after the different target organizations getting clear on who we're going to talk to and meet, uh, whether we're trying to access the company through the hidden job market or through the open job market uh, through an online application. And as you can see, there are some questions here that really are kind of the overarching uh, things to respond to as you go through these different phases. Um, the fourth phase, the last final piece of the puzzle, uh, lots of people sometimes they get into tons of interviews and they, they don't close, so they're struggling to be uh, able to conquer phase four, which is the interviewing and negotiation phase. And uh, these questions that I've, I've put out there, if you kind of start to think in terms of these questions, uh, then you start to see progress going through these different phases. So I leave those there. We're going to come back to those potentially toward the end if you have some time. As we go through the four phases, there is sort of an increasing specificity of direction that a job seeker is taking. So when we're in phase one, we really don't know necessarily what we're going to be doing. Um, tomorrow, we might be exploring different career paths. We might be trying to get onto the phone, have informational interviews with people. By the time we are obviously at the interview table in a company, uh, we should know that company really, really well and have some really specific things to say to the people that we're engaging with at that point. There's also, I find, decreasing confusion um, in the mind of the job seeker around what the personal and unique value proposition of that person is. Uh, so personal and unique value proposition is really like, what do we bring? We always talk about unique value proposition or unique selling proposition in business, but from a job, uh, job seeker standpoint, we also have value propositions that we have to understand and be able to market really when we are um, in the job search, we are selling something and that something is ourselves. So what exactly are we selling? That's a big question. 
I listen very carefully when I'm in intake calls with clients or if I'm just communicating with people on, on the internet or I'm on a call with them somehow. Um, I'm listening to some of the things that they are saying to get a sense of what position, where in the four phases of transition they may be. These are some of the, these are some real things that I've heard people say. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I had someone in my family actually say it's time to dust off my resume and check out Indeed not super long ago. That always kind of makes me cringe a little bit because um, it's not an overly strategic approach to getting through these phases. But it tells me that they might be in one of those earlier phases. Certainly if you're saying to yourself, I really have no idea what I want to do next, you are you're clearly in phase one. How do I stand out from other job seekers? I often hear about from people who know where they'd like to go and they're struggling through phase two to understand like what do I have to say whether it's on my resume, my LinkedIn profile, when I'm on the phone with someone, to make it clear that I am worth looking further at. Uh, we're not necessarily in the interview phase at this point, in phase two, but we're trying to figure out how can we attract interview opportunities. Um, and that's, that's also true if we're sending out CVs and not getting any calls. It means that there's something wrong in the messaging. So we are struggling to market ourselves properly through phase two, or we are marketing to the wrong people if we're in phase three. We're not actually um, getting after the people who are the decision makers uh, when it comes to the roles we are, are passionate about being in. I seem to struggle in interviews uh, or I, you know, I get to three or four interviews and, and I can't quite make it all the way. That's another common thing that I do here in people who are just struggling through the last bit, phase four usually. Sometimes it might actually be a phase three problem because the job seeker is chasing an opportunity that might not be the best fit for them. But I'm always listening to these things. So as you talk to yourself about where you are in your transition, I want you to think, could I be in phase one? Could I be in phase two, three, or four? In phase one, uh, there's a lot of inner work that's done in a job seeker to understand who they are, where they're trying to go. What are the things that I call strengths, interests? What are the market needs? What are the opportunities that are available for you uh, to apply the skills that you have? What are the things that you must have in a job? And what are the things that will absolutely take you out of uh, pursuing a role? It might be a, a kind of industry. It might be um, an ethical question. It might be an environmental concern. Um, so there's lots of things that can be deal breakers, but we're exploring what those things are. And every individual is very different here. Deciding who we want, who we want to serve in our career and lives, super important at this phase. And a lot of people kind of don't realize this until maybe they've gone through several jobs and they're like, I'm not passionate about any of these. Um, I don't particularly, I'm not attached to this. And, and that might go back to understanding what the vision and mission of your life might be. So if your vision might be, let's say I wanted to, um, you know, bring renewable energy to the um, three countries in Africa, right? And okay, are there organizations that are already working in those countries that I might be able to contribute to in some way? And you would join them on that mission to bring renewable energy to those countries. For example, but if we don't have an idea of what would make the world better for us, we don't have as much of an attachment, not as much of a fulfilling purpose behind our work. So these things that we're doing in phase one around informational interviews, meeting people who are in the different verticals that we may be interested in uh, investigating. And uh, if <laughs> perhaps not so much now in, in COVID times, but we're job shadowing people if we can. That's one of the things that we can do to discover what it's like to be like in, in that reality. You may be taking assessments from certain people um, in phase one. You may be journaling quite a lot and checking in with yourself to sort of see what are the things that I'm feeling towards this job search right now. And we're gradually going from having a very broad focus in our job search to an increasingly narrow one. So instead of having you know three different main avenues that we're pursuing, we're going from three to two and then two to one. That will make things much easier as we go through phase two. Phase two is really about getting clear on the core message that we bring, the core value that we bring. So if we're, let's try, let's say we're trying to position ourselves into three different verticals, it's really hard, for example, to be a doctor who also fixes cars and sells insurance. There's a bit of a lack of credibility when someone comes out and says that that's what they do. So the clearer that we are, we've narrowed our focus enough, we can start to position ourselves as someone who is an ideal candidate in that vertical. We look at what are some of the unfair advantages that you might bring to the table over other uh, job seekers in that space. What exactly is your, are your personal marketing documents uh, saying to the world? 
And who exactly are you trying to attract? Are you someone who wants to work in a small firm? Well, talk about how you love working in small firms. If you'd like to be in a giant multinational company, start to look and talk around having sort of a global vision for the work that you do or seeing how your, your work impacts people possibly on the other side of the earth. The resume, LinkedIn, all those things kind of get worked on at this point. One of the things that I suggest to people if they're writing their resume that they can take it, right? We all talk about the idea that recruiters spend about six to seven seconds looking at a resume initially. So if you just took your resume, put it in front of someone who doesn't know you all that well, and after six or seven seconds, ask them, what do you think I bring to the table based off of what you said? And that could be a very broad question. You want to see what exactly is being interpreted by your documents by someone who doesn't know you that, that well. So not one of your best friends. You want someone who is a weaker tie to kind of look at what is your messaging like? What is it really saying? You might establish a one-liner or what one, my friend uh, Diana Y.K. Chan would call a glowing introduction. So right, uh, right off the top, I said, I help students transition uh, from school to the working world. That's kind of my glowing introduction. That's just a one-liner that I like to be known by. And so that's part of my personal brand. And then you would bring that brand into all kinds of things. Um, it might be all the emails that you write. It might be cards that you send. It might be your LinkedIn banner. There's a lot of different ways that you can build a brand. Um, but once you know about it, it's time to start putting it out into the world so other people see you in a certain way. Phase three, job search execution, is about engaging in dialogues, one conversation at a time, planting seeds in different organizations and building relationships. The more you can build relationships with the people who could actually turn around and hire you, who are decision makers, uh, the better your chances of actually getting into an interview and, and being there as one of the, the favorite candidates. Um, it doesn't necessarily solve the issue of kind of winning the interview stage itself, but it gets you a lot more interviews when you have relationships in places. And then of course, building tailored applications is always something to focus on if we're, all, if we're always sending the same application to every company, we're not really doing our due diligence in terms of putting our, ourselves forward in a way that will resonate with an employer. Sorry for all the fast talking as I try and keep uh, us back on time, but so again, planting seeds, we're working normally with weaker ties at this point where we're getting to know new people, we're expanding our network, we're doing direct outreach, possibly on LinkedIn or by email, so we're gonna reach out to people in different places who are, um, right now, they're strangers to us, and we're going to see if we can present ourselves as people we can build relationships with. Um, not to ask for a referral right off the bat. I often say that the relationship comes before the referral, but that is something that is a major focus of phase three. Finally, when we get into phase four, it's about going from being known through the job search, through our resume, um, and now we're building a sense of like, a sense of trust, and ultimately, the job seeker who builds the most trust with an employer is the one who typically gets the job at the end of the day, gets the offer. And we're working on building our stories that compel people to understand the value that we bring. And as we get into negotiation, we're collaborating over what the best offer, best compensation package is. For that, so just to kind of recap some of the actions, just we're working on stories. And, and for a lot of people, maybe telling your, a story about yourself is something that's pretty new to you. Um, you might have to do a little bit of practice. A lot of interviewing is done now virtually, and if you're not that comfortable turning on your camera and being on screen, uh, that's something that can be practiced in this day and age quite easily. Uh, just simply get into conversations with people. And then knowing your values as you go through a negotiation, and I have that point there, which may surprise a lot of people, which um, I, I believe in this quite fully, is to always counteroffer. Even if the employer comes back to you uh, with a no on what you're asking for, um, that's okay. It means that you know that you've gotten the best op offer that they had available to you, and you can move forward. Both sides can really move forward knowing that the deal is as good as it can be, and they can be trusted. Both sides can trust one another, and we can initiate this job in a way that is of higher energy versus um, possibly with some resentment if you felt like you got cheated out of something in the offer. So uh, that was a very fast presentation. Feel free to connect with me. I'd like to be able to take some questions right now. So I'm just going to slide over and see if anything came up in the chat. Let me see here. Okay. 
It's just networking has taken place. Is there anything else that you guys would like me to discuss based off of what I just spoke about? Or um, is there anything that you'd like to just ask off the top of, of your heads? If I have several positions in mind, okay, so uh, Dr. Brand has asked, if I have several positions in mind, how do I find the most suitable? Yeah, that's a great question. It's not exactly, um, I don't think there's a really short answer to that question, but it, it depends on what you value. And one of the great questions that I love to ask uh, clients, sometimes I'm asked it as well, uh, I'm struggling with something in my career, is what are you optimizing for right now in your career? So the most suitable job, if you're optimizing for income, may be the highest paying job or the highest paying industry that you have available um, to you. If you're optimizing for a life with your family where you're raising kids, maybe you need to find work that is really, really flexible. So uh, it's about what is your priority right now? And this is something that can change throughout your lifetime, obviously. Um, so there's there's a whole kind of there's a range of different ways, um, but looking at aside from just what are the the things to optimize for in your life, you might look at how do you socialize with other people? Do you prefer to work alone or in groups? Do you prefer to have sort of the same constant flow of work every day, or do you prefer things to be unpredictable? And that's uh, one of the you know there's a lot of different questions to ask at this point in the this is phase one really that we're talking about. Lots of questions to be asked, but at the end of the day, you're usually going to make a decision based off of what is most important to you right now in your life. I'll leave you with that for now. Uh, I appreciate the information. I may request a connection with you on LinkedIn for sure. I'd love to connect with anyone who is, is here today. A couple of detailed questions. Yeah. Um, if anyone has any questions that you'd like now, I can, I can try and give my best answer. Um, and if you have uh, want an extended answer? I'd be more than happy to to write one to you, or we could have a chat at some point. Yeah, you're very welcome, uh, Dr. Brand. Um, yeah, appreciate that. Anybody else with a question? I think one of the things that I wouldn't mind adding, just to to cap off on Dr. Brand's point, is that it's totally okay to have that sort of vague unsure direction we're talking about phase one and i just want to validate and acknowledge that that that, that is totally normal and if that's your experience there's nothing wrong with you uh, you, you will get clearer through it with time as you go through the phases hey rachel hey thank you so much for that it was so informative it's a lot condensed into 20 minutes so. <laughs> <laughs> that was great so do you want me to put or do you want to put your contact information just in the chat maybe so people can click on it a little bit easier Absolutely. Let me do that right now. Maybe your website or. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to connect with anyone. LinkedIn is a place I do hang out fairly often. You're, you're very good at you're you're very uh, you have a lot of content on there, so I follow you, and it's uh, it's awesome to see. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's um, honestly just a wonderful community. Great place to meet a whole bunch of different people. Sorry that my link didn't actually, it's not come out in a true hyperlink, but um, if you copy paste that, it should bring you right to my profile. But yeah, I'm always open to just meeting new people and I think it's a great platform just for doing that. Awesome, well, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your time. And then your website is uh, coach, coachwazo.com. Yeah, I'll uh, very quickly just take yeah, that put back that in there. here. There we go, coachwazo.com. Just copy paste that and you will find me there. Amazing. Well, I just wanted to, we're, we're at the end of the event today. So I just wanted to thank everyone for coming. Um, I'm also just going to stick a link in here. All of our upcoming events are at torontojobs.ca slash news. So if you want to learn more about our upcoming events, you can go there. That's all the links to register. I think our 2021 events are listed there for January. We do have a few coming up. Uh, one for students, one for tech, and one for um, just a general career fair or career conference like today. And we're doing a couple hiring events. So um, everything you need is on torontojobs.ca. We do recruiting. We have some job postings there. Um, and thank you again, again, so much, Mike. I, I think you have one more question here. So uh, I don't know if you want to answer it or you want to get back to uh, Dr. Verena, but she's asking about the four phases, but you mentioned six steps. Yeah, okay. I can, I can answer that really quickly. So on my site, there is something called the six steps 
uh, to confidently launching your career, which is a guide that I put together mainly for students who are coming out and just starting their career. And those are six action steps as opposed to the four phases, which have many action steps within them. Um, the six steps is really just sort of like that, you know, what could I do right now to start to boost my movement going from school to the working world? So that's, that's the difference between those two things. I'm glad you caught that. Amazing. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Mike, for being here. Um, I'm going to do our closing remarks not on the stage. I'm going to do them here. because. Um, so I just wanted, again, to say thanks so much for being here. Uh, go to torontojobs.ca slash news or just torontojobs.ca uh, for all of our information. We do Facebook Live. We have a lot of articles and blogs, and I'm sure you do on your website, too, a lot of content. So we try to put as much out there for people as possible to uh, to help the community. So. That's awesome. All right. That's well, thank you, thank so, you much, so much, Mike, again. and thanks to everyone for being here today. We really appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Thank All right. You. Thanks so much.